Good morning. Um, let me acknowledge the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt. And to continue the protocol, I will set out the command and control structure of the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force. Um, present is Deputy Chief of Police, Mr. Davidson Valerie. Next, we have Superintendent Richmond Valentine, responsible for the Central Division. We have next to him is Superintendent Joseph Williams, responsible for the Northern Division. Acting Superintendent Cleville Mills for the Southern Division. And we have our good friend, Deputy Chief of Police, Mr. Rodney, representing the RSS and the Ant Royal and Antigua. Royal Antigua and Barbuda Police Force. Mr. Valerie will speak on matters relating to crime, given appreciation of the crime situation after the passage of Hurricane Maria. Mr. Valentine will speak on matters of ops. Mr. Joseph Williams will give us a brief overview of the situation in Northern Division. Mr. Cleville Mills will give us a brief overview of the situation in the Southern Division. And Deputy Chief of Antigua, representing the RSS, will give us an overview of the RSS situation and the deployment of the RSS here. Yeah. Um, I must say that you, ca you can see that the command and The command and control structure of the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force is in order. I can also report that no police officer lost their life during the passage of Hurricane Maria. And that is very important. Having spoken about the command and control structure, that is very important too because we know that the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force is mandated by law to maintain law and order, to prevent crimes, to protect lives and properties. Permit me please to give you a report on the death toll as a result of Hurricane Maria. We have had confirmed so far 27 deaths. Persons missing confirmed. Twenty-seven persons confirmed missing. And we also have an additional unconfirmed reports of 18 persons missing. On behalf of the Colonel for Dominica Police Force, I would like to express my deepest condolences to, to the persons and families who lost their loved ones during the passage of Hurricane Maria. As it relates to the security situation in Dominica, I can report that immediately following the passage of Hurricane Maria, we have had and that's a fact. We have had massive looting. Several business places in the city of Ruzu, and to a lesser extent in the town of Portsmouth, had lootings. On the occasion, on the situation of the deployment of the regional forces, I can give a breakdown. We have 13. SSU personnel from the St. Lucia Police Force present on island. Trinidad and, and Tobago Defense Force. We have 25 sailors, 25 soldiers, and 10 airmen. They are responsible. The Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force personnel are now st staged at the Deepwater Harbor, the main port, and they have been providing security and operations on the Deepwater Harbor. They are assisting with that. And obviously the airmen are assisting with distribution of supplies. 
Barbados Defense Force. We have 22 soldiers from the 27 sorry soldiers from the Barbados Defense Force. Royal and Antigua, Royal Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force. We have six personnel on island. RSS, Regional Security System. We have 30 officers on island, and Mr. Rodney, the Deputy Commissioner, is responsible for the overall supervision of these officers. We expect an additional 15 SSU personnel from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we are expecting very soon to be on island 120 defense forces from the Jamaica Defense Force. They should be there shortly. As I said earlier, the Trinidad Defense Force is responsible for operations on the Deepwater Harbor. They secure in the port. And, and, and there is some rumor circulating that the ports in Dominica are not safe. I, I wish to dispel that rumor. That is not true at all. We have had the Dutch, a Dutch contingent, together with the Trinidad Defense Force, providing security for the port. We have the Rose Fisheries Complex. We have our local officers together with the the overseas deployment assisting us with that security. And, and so the ports in Dominica are very secure. I can't give you an up-to-date report, but Mr. Williams will tell you what the situation is with Longhouse and the Carib cruise ship booth. Carib's cruise ship booth, sorry. Prime, as it relates to the passage of Hurricane Maria, we have had 40 arrests in criminal matters and we have had 86 arrests in violation of the curfew. I must tell you also that overnight, we have had a breakout at the prison of four prison officers. Three of them were on remand. Um, prisoners, sorry. Three of them were on remand and one was serving a term. Um, we have captured two so far. They were encountered last night. Two of them were shot and they are now undergoing treatment at the Princess Margaret Hospital. One of them, which was of very concern to us, was on a murder charge on remand, but is now nursing his injury at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Yesterday, we had an incident where somebody tried to loot J. Stephens and Company Limited on King of Street, the supermarket. That person was encountered by the police, and he was also shot because he was armed with a weapon. He too is undergoing treatment at the Princess Margaret Hospital. And so, as the Prime Minister earlier stated that really and truly, um, the police force was very challenged, um, both as it relates to search and recovery and dealing with the massive looting. But we, have, we now have situation under control. We have our regional forces here, and they are assisting us very well in that regard. And so I will now yield to Mr. Valerie, who can give an overview on the, on the crime situation. You taking questions now, or are you taking questions after everybody speak? Yeah, thank you very much. Mr. Valerie. Good morning. Let me recognize the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Ruth Skerritt, other gazetted officers, chief of police, and other gazetted officers of the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force, the media, other distinguished guests, good morning. Following the passage of Hurricane Maria, the police has been active in responding to the security concerns around Dominica. The crime concerns emerged immensely when we got reports of massive looting in and around Rosu. Our response initially included getting to the various locations where the reports were made and to a great extent cordoning off those areas with the resources that were at our disposal. Several young men and ladies 
we could call mobs, was seen around the city. Many of them were searching broken premises and looting from those premises, primarily business places. We were able to put the situation under some level of control and quell the problems that were emerging from the looting. Despite our repeated efforts on many occasions, what we saw was that the mobs or the young men would turn from one location to the other. So even having arrested a number of them, some others would have eventually gone to other locations. But as I speak, this matter has been brought under, um, under control and the police are patrolling the streets, the police are monitoring the situation and with the assistance of the foreign police officers that we have on island, it is making it <clears throat> much easier for us as we continue to do our duties in this respect. It is sad to say that <clears throat> the behavior of our young people suggests that uh, we need to, to understand that we are doing destruction to our own survival because the police needs to be outside assisting in the recovery process. There were people who were injured, there were people who died and had to be, had to be found and, uh, and brought um, into, into, into areas of, um, of safety. But we had been hampered, we had been um, distracted by the behavior of many of the young people in and around Ruzo. At this stage, we can say that we have arrested a number of persons, as indicated by the Chief of Police. A number of persons have been arrested for looting, and a number of persons have been arrested for violation of the curfew order. And we want to sound a clear warning to those people who are taking the curfew order lightly. The curfew order recommends that people are inside at 4 o'clock, 4 p.m., must not catch anybody, any uh, resident on the streets. At 4 p.m., residents must be at their houses, at their homes, when the police patrols the street and finds anybody outside without a permit to be on the streets, they will be arrested. Regardless to what it is, you will be arrested if you do not have a permit. The permit has to be obtained from the chief of police. So persons are expected to come to police headquarters and request a permit, indicating the need to be outside after 4 o'clock. And they must remain inside until 8 o'clock in the morning. So at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, 7.30 in the morning, you are found outside on the street without a permit from the chief of police. You will be arrested for being in violation of the curfew order. And so, we as the police will continue to do our best to ensure that during this recovery process, crime is minimized as much as possible. And we want to appeal to the public to work with us, to support us. We will respond to any report that we get as it relates to criminal activities in anywhere around Ruzu or Dominica. And we ask that you, the public, Inform us on whatever suspicions that you have so that we could together work to build the recovery of this country. I thank you.